toughest part for this for us right is getting people to to listen or watch yep and it takes a long time i mean they say the average podcast only lasts the people last seven episodes yeah and then they quit i heard the goal is you have to get it to 50 and then over 50 is where you start to see like the the following and the traction yeah. and stuff is kind of what i was told anyways should be my my goal is get it to yeah 50, get I it mean, to 50. if that's true then God damn it, I'm close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Break It Down with Braden. Super excited. I've got my buddy Ryan Madrid on here. What's up, Braden? Thanks for joining, bud. <laughs> uh, Ryan's business development manager, lender at uh, VIP Mortgage on the Crawford team. And uh, how long have you been with them? So I've been with VIP. So VIP is the only place I've ever been okay. it's in the mortgage business. So I started with them January 7th of uh, 2013. And then Stuart and I started working together uh, about five years ago. Okay. Yeah, so we've been together for a good amount of time now and cruising, man. Yeah. Yeah, things are good. Ryan and I actually met each other eight years ago when I was kind of in the mortgage business myself. He wasn't kind of, he was. I was, <laughs> in the mortgage, I was in the mortgage business myself and actually uh, had a branch of Pinnacle Capital and reached yeah. out to Ryan, was trying to recruit him, and we met for breakfast, and he's like, actually, I'm trying to recruit you, so why don't you come work for VIP? Yeah. And we ended up just kind of bullshitting for an hour or so and just kind of chatting yeah. about different real estate agents that we were kind of networking with around town and- yeah, no, we were talking about this beforehand. Uh, it's funny because we got in the business pretty close to the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, though you're at least a decade younger than me. <laughs> um, but your dad was over at Pinnacle Capital as well, and I remember sending, I remember calling you about a deal. But fast forward, you moved over to the title business, and and you know, Braden and I were sitting around. I'm looking at the cameras here, but we were talking a little bit about what would what would happen if we would have actually been realtors at that time, and now where we'd be because we see some really, really big deals happening and a lot of success. Not that we're not having great success, but yep. you always wonder. Oh yeah. You always wonder. What's it like on the other side? It is. But our our, our businesses have kind of always grown the same way. Yep. We're, all, we're both relationship guys and, and it seems like we're very old in this business, but we're not yeah. really. But yeah, it's uh, it's been cool to watch you kind of grow your name around the community yeah. around town. and Yeah, you too. As well as uh, kind of what you've been doing with EC70 and yeah. uh, what Stuart does with the charros and everything, what you guys literally do in the community has been awesome to see as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think that's a huge part of our business. Um, because we're all, I mean, we're 100% just referrals. Yep. So, I'm like years ago, I was at everything, and so were you. Yep. You might still be, but I'm not. Like, <laughs> I mean, every broker open, every, every event, you know, that was kind of my deal, but. Yep. Man, it's just like it gets kind of tiring. It's fun and stuff, but you kind of you have to eventually grow out of that. But we had a meeting yesterday actually because we do have Kyle Sebastian who yep. is one of our other buddies, and you know he's uh, got a little fire lit underneath him right now, and he wants to start off the year next year, you know, on the right foot. So he's like, we we gotta, we got to go back to the old school ways of doing things. So I was like, you know what, I'll support you in that, and I'll go. Yep. But for me, it's like. It's the charity events, like your like the twenty thirty deal, like night flight this weekend, and then our holiday classic for EC seventy. We just did the ride, and then Stewart's got you know the the Charles Lodge for spring training. We've got freaking Make a Wish gala next weekend. Yep. That's the kind of stuff that I think that I've kind of fallen into instead of like the the one off broker opens on Wednesday nights. That because I just get into rabbit hole with that stuff. Yep, I won't come home until midnight, and it's like because it's it's fun. And that's the problem. Yep. Because I needed to grow up a little bit, everybody. <laughs> well, and where you actually form those relationships are those groups because you actually are, you're spending every month with them on different events that you're attending and yeah. you're, you're fundraising together. And so you actually right. build those long lasting relationships. Totally. Um, one thing that you guys may not know is uh, Ryan also has another podcast. So actually kind of how I started this one is I basically sent uh, – photos of Ryan's to uh, the video guys that are helping me here today uh, and basically said, hey, I want to rip Ryan off. So uh, if you guys haven't checked out Real Talk with Ryan Madrid, highly recommend you guys do that. Uh, another cool podcast kind of featuring a bunch of uh, locals in the real estate industry and kind of what they've got going yeah. on. Um, and you didn't rip anything off. I, <laughs> I, I told him, I said, come on down and like, look, dude, copy whatever you need to copy. <laughs> because there's plenty of, uh, plenty of time and plenty of people that come on these podcasts. But I think ours was... 
I originally started as like a real estate podcast, yep. but like I was, I just couldn't find like the traction on it or like the, just, I just didn't really like love doing it. My sister came on board with us and she kind of helped me re-energize the whole thing. And it, so now it's more like, yeah, we're having real estate people on there. It's that's important because it is, you know, our business, Yep. but it's like cool people doing cool things in Phoenix or in Arizona, you know, cool businesses, entrepreneurs, nonprofit stuff, yep. people that got cool stories. That's kind of where I, I find it to be more fun. Yep. And at first she's like, you can't keep having all your friends on. <laughs> and I'm like, why not? Yeah. Like, I have a lot of cool friends. I do a lot of cool stuff and, yep. and it well makes it them. easy. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, it makes it easier. We, we do have some cool people that we've had on that I didn't know. And now I know really well, but they tend to flow way better when it's like your buddy across the way and they were both doing good things. So why not promote each other, yep. help each other out? So. I've, I've had a couple of random people ask me if they could be on it and stuff. And I'm like, yes, I will get there. Eventually, <laughs> yeah. But you know, yeah. I want to have all my friends on here first. And yeah. I want to feature them and kind yeah. of get their exposure out there. Have you been hit yet by this, by any of those companies that like actually that, that like they're like agents for people that want to be on? Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I we're like a year out on people that, Probably more than that that I don't know. Right. And well, how many episodes have you filmed? Forty-one, 40? I think. Okay, 40, that's, 41. That's a lot. We were trying to get to fifty-two for the year, but yep. like we, that that led to us doing two a day. Yeah. And dude, doing two a day for as long as we do them, it's like, dude, I get done and I'm like fried with yeah. one. Yeah. So yeah, but dude, it's been good. People love being on them, like you know, people. Love, dude, it's a whole another new marketing tool for for us, and yep. and it's fun to do it. And, you know, you need like to pivot sometimes, dude. We've been doing this for a long time. It's, dude, you gotta get something to light your, like the fire again. I, right? Can't agree with you more. Yeah, I think yeah. like what you talked about in the beginning is all these broker opens, all these events, and everything. It's like, okay, I wanted something new and refreshing that was yeah gonna energize me as much as energize the people that I have on. And <clears throat> totally as, as cool as it is to you know have you on, is it's it's awesome just to kind of have some new things to kind of energize me and kind of show you know what what's going on in the industry and, and feature some of my, you know, yeah. top people on here and talk about what they've got going on in there. Absolutely. Industry. And they love talking about what they want, what they're doing and, yep. and not in a contest anyway. I mean, it's cause it's cool because they do like talking about it and people, the toughest part for this, for us, right. Is getting people to, to listen or watch. Yep. And it takes a long time. I mean, they say the average podcast only lasts or the people last seven episodes yeah. and then they quit. I heard the goal is you have to get it to 50 and then over 50 is where you start to see like the, the following and the traction yeah. and stuff is kind of what I was told anyways, should be my, my goal is get it, yeah. to, get I it mean, to 50. If that's true, then oh, God damn it, I'm close. <laughs> <laughs> right I the need to get there, please. <laughs> but I'm not at the point at the end of every one. I'm like, please like, and subscribe and hit the button and follow us and do all the stuff, please. Like, cause we, when I was actually watching, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, go I was for watching it. one of your episodes and, uh, you were giving credit to Trisha. So your sister for, uh, yeah. putting this all together. So I want to make sure I plug in my guys here. So I got Jesus and Carson back here with ITR visuals. So, uh, just want to give them a quick plug. So any yeah. uh, real estate videos that you're wanting to do, if you want to start your own podcast, we've got this space now. So uh, if you want to be featured on Ryan's podcast, you can reach out to Ryan. Yep. Good opportunity to do that. Absolutely. Um, We're not competing, by the way, so it's perfect. <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. Both of ours in the same day. <laughs> That was uh, one of the things I talked to Jesus about. I was like, hey, you know, there's going to be other people that are going to reach out to you. Just yeah. don't partner with any other title companies. You know, I'd, I'd like to have an exclusive with you with, with yeah. the title companies. Other than that, you can go anywhere you want. So what? What? So explain, like, what they do for you guys besides this. Yeah. Um, so obviously help set this up. Mm -hmm. So kind of help me put together this entire studio. Um, we shoot the content, and then they basically take the whole content back and put all the ed editing together. So they put together the – the still frame so they'll take a photo of you and they'll mm -hmm. put together the blue background which we cool. ripped off of from you yep, yep. Um, i actually hey, it looks good though. it looks good it looks good i actually don't reinvent i something. wanted to do orange basically because kind of like the theme and yeah, they're like yeah. actually uh you're doing blue and i was like <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah we'll go with you we take it as a compliment exactly yeah. um but what about so like i saw some of the other videos you did so you don't just do real estate stuff though right True. Yeah, they could okay. do any kind of videos they want. You want. So um, I know they just did a video for a wedding. Um, okay. They they could do tons of audio videos. They partnered with uh, Variant Wheels, um, so they do videos for Variant Wheels all the time. Uh, Bikini Beans is a client hey. of theirs. I don't believe you. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. They're doing sorority uh, videos all the time, That's which cool. are a lot of fun for them. Um, you name it. How did uh, you guys hook up then? 
this is like a plug for these guys yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, funny. So I was uh, <clears throat> meeting with one of my real estate partners, and he just brought Jesus with him. I didn't even know he was coming, and then I was like, okay, come come with me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so you stole him. <laughs> Pretty much. I was like, yeah, I like everything you're doing, and I want to be a part of that. So That's um, cool. Yeah. I know. It's, it did, I, I commend you guys for doing like what you're passionate about and what you enjoy. I mean, because I get jealous. Like, seeing, I mean, it's hard work, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, and I love what I do, obviously, too. But yep. I'm sure you do as well. Yep. But, you know, I didn't wake up and be like, dude, I want to be a mortgage banker. Right. 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 You know, these guys have probably been into this stuff for, like, the, their whole, like, teenage years through their into their 20s, right? When you talk to them about it and they geek out about it. Right. And it's super fun. And they're so, buying new equipment all the time. Right. And adding new things. And that way they could be hiring their friends. And hiring like, their friends. Oh, yeah. Yep. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> super cool, fun. man. Well, wow. um, What's been your biggest challenge in the in the mortgage industry? Um, oh man, there's a few, but I think that like what I always used to think it was like the development side of things, getting clients and get you know getting partners. Yep. And, and what I've realized over the years is it's like maintaining, it's like account management is more important to me than it is business development now. So like. Dude, I mean, there's so many shiny objects for these people, and even yep. though they're your friend, man, it just like, like somebody else comes up with something bigger and better, and you know, you can all of a sudden pull a report and you see like, what the hell? They did a deal <laughs> with like, you know, this like four, like, and I was like, you know, and then you feel like you gotta make that phone call, like, hey, what's going on? And then it comes back to you know, like, are you doing everything that you probably should have been doing? Yep. There's a lot of times there's you're not, yep. right? And I know for a fact I, you know, I get like very complacent and lazy on some things, and I'm. So what I think I've done really well the last year at least um, is figuring those 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 things out and then hiring people to kind of manage those accounts. So like our new thing is we have LOs that are that are younger in their careers or they want to do more, and yep. we have accounts that like I that I have like gained over the years that I don't spend enough time there. I can't spend enough time there. I got too much other stuff going on. So we're just giving them those accounts to go manage those accounts. And then we, you know, we figure out like the compensation plan and all that stuff. But yep. like for my, for example, my sister was hired originally. She had this part of it was she's going to run the podcast for me. And then my nephew, Trey, obviously does in the production part of it and, or the engineering part, they call it. Um, but Trisha handles the brokery. Like she goes and spends like freaking two or three days a week there. Yeah. I remember and, talking about that when I was over Yeah. There. So, and that has helped us dramatically as far as maintaining the business and getting more business. So yep. she, every new person, because they're growing, is she like gets them and, and she works with them and she helps them and she creates plans with them. So that's been really, really good. Um, and then Liz Dicer, she's been over at my home group yep. managing that account for like four years. And it's just kind of like, but that's a different beast in itself because there's so many agents there and not everybody goes there. So like everybody goes to the brokery. Right. Because they're still small. Yeah. So for me, this, the challenge has been that, you know, staying freaking consistent, doing everything I need to do and just not being like lazy. Yep. And it's and anything that goes bad is pretty much my own fault. I read a good book the other day. It was called Traction. Dude. S same thing. Just talks all about that. It's yeah. The EOS you, system. Or, yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. How to retain. Yeah. Your so I read that book, too, and I gave it to Stuart and yep. I gave it to Jeremy. Um, in my, so my networking group that I'm in, it's all business owners pretty much. And Mike Brewer, who owns Brewer, Brewer Plumbing, biggest plumbing company in Arizona. Yeah. They do all the big builders. His whole business is ran off traction. Yeah. So Musker moving man now with traction. Justin Hodge, yep. traction. Um, Nate Dominguez, who, who has BNI, who yep. owns BNI, traction. So yep. All these guys, and it's basically just accountability systems, right? And knowing how to hire and fire and, and when you grow and how to do all that stuff. So it is really, again, though, you have to do it. Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you guys actually come back to it every month and review? We don't. Yeah, because we're, we're not, because we, when you get into that actual system, you have like a consultant that comes and works with you, yep. right? And it's expensive. Yep. But one thing I did, and I'll give this all the credit to Stu, and that's why we're probably as good as we are. Dude, like 75% of the stuff that's in traction, he he already had done. Okay. Like he had built this whole already business. Like he is so systems and process oriented that we have got, and his his like ability to like actually stick with things is yep. incredible. Like I'm like what they call the visionary guy. Yep, right? <laughs> got a lot of ideas. Yeah, great, <laughs> lot of ideas, lot of ideas. 
and then you need somebody to implement them for you. Yep. So as I've grown older in my 47 years, I'm be 48 this year. I just know that I'm just like, I know my strengths, but I know my weaknesses and my strengths are, I got, I can, you have great ideas and I'll, and I'll start, but I need somebody to help me finish. Yep. And that's when, even when my, all my business coaches, like they all know that shit. They're just like, that's why I can't have a business coach that's just the same way. Like they, there's a lot of business coaches that are just like, yeah, dude, we're gonna do this, 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 and this. And the next time you see them, they're like, what'd you do? And I'm like, I didn't do any of it. Yep. <laughs> I need you to do it with me. Right. So that's Walk what you yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just the way it goes. But <clears throat> for me, dude, and for you, we're relationship guys, right? Yep. The business comes because we become friends with this. We've been doing this stuff long enough where we kind of can decide who we wanna roll with and who we don't, correct? Yeah, like, so definitely for, in some regard for sure in some regard yeah. right so a lot of the business that, that we maintain and we get is because people like us and know us like us and trust us and yeah. and, and that's the way to that's yeah. the way i'd choose to roll yeah i mean name's been around for long enough and res respectable enough and no like and trust like you said it's yeah uh, i didn't always start that way though i started this <laughs> way i was single when i started this way i yeah. started in this business so <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes <laughs> along the way, but it's not, it's not always the best in the real estate industry. No, single. no, it's fun, but it wasn't the right way to get rolling. I think, like yeah. you know, so you know, things are different now nowadays, and you know, just what are uh, what are goals for twenty twenty two? We got some big news coming out in twenty twenty two, so that that's TBD. Yeah, but okay. uh, um, uh, but yeah, no, we have we've got some growth that we're looking for, so we're gonna. You know, I would say the next three years we want to get to a billion dollars. Okay. Um, we're gonna hit. I think we hit two seventy last, two hundred seventy million last year, and we're we had a we're at one hundred eighty one at the at the end of last month. So we should be over two. We'll be at two thirty this year. But our goal is to grow with the right people. Yep. So as as how many are on the team right now? So LOs. Yeah, so well, we have 15 total people on okay. the team, but we have two inside a loan officers. We call them ILOs. Yep. So basically take, you know, they take a lot of our discovery calls. So loan applications, and they'll take it all the way through yep. two production managers, a client court, client relations coordinator who basically schedules everything for us. Um, so if you're going to get a loan, if you have somebody that's going to that needs a prequal, they won't go straight to a loan officer with us. They'll come through our tailor. Taylor will call them and schedule an appointment like you would if you're going to the doctor's office or something like Got that. It. So there's no back and forth. Yeah, so. yeah. And then we have Kyle, Rachel, Liz, Trisha, um, Daniel Vargo is in California. She has business here and there. Uh, but I met Liz for the first time actually at the uh, no my, home, my home group uh, golf tournament. I know. You, I was like, I don't know how. First I time you. ever. I know. I was like, I don't know how I met wow. you before. Also, yeah. she was a competitor before, so it wasn't a That's big true. fan. But right, that <laughs> now, was now we can be best. That friends. was five years ago. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, that was a good pickup of you guys. That's yeah, it. that was good. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of transition, I think, within our own team, and we're gonna give, people are gonna take over new roles, and then our goal for my new goal and job basically is gonna be more recruiting standpoint for just for just our team, yep. um, and giving those guys that work for us an opportunity to you know, go out and do whatever it is that they want to do and get more business and help them. And that's, it's more of a support in that standpoint. Yeah. Um, instead of like myself going to and, you know, getting the relationships I want them to, Yep. but I still will as well. Okay. But yeah, that's kind of where we're going. And I think next year is going to be a big deal. And so I'll tell you offline what's yeah. going on, but <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel like you already know, but yeah, no, it's going to be good. So what about you? Very cool. Um, I want to hit three million in production, actually. So um, we did just under, just over two this this last year. Um, and, well, we will hit just over two this yeah. year, uh, and did just under two last year. So uh, three million would be like to, like to be my goal. Um, That's so. good. And you're like a freaking one man show over here. Not no, we've got a. We've got a I don't mean team. from. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't mean from the. It, from that's I said that yeah, incorrectly. Yeah. I mean <laughs> for what you do. Yeah. 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 So you're out there getting the hustling, getting the business. And yep, I'm looking for an assistant right now. Yeah, Are I'm you? trying to push that on the boss to make that happen. Hopefully that'll come. I down feel the like you can get soon. that done. I know. I'm you hear that, on. everybody? You need somebody to work for him. It's on the podcast. Pretty now. cool guy. <laughs> you heard it. You heard it first. <laughs> um, no, that's awesome. Good for you, man. Yeah, it's big business. It's funny you hear like that number versus like our number, and it's basically the same number. 
<laughs> it's very similar, but yeah. it's it just so different, such a different, you know, with the compensation plan. You hear that, you know, that on a real estate, the realtor side, and you're like, Jesus, yep. you know, he's rich. People ask me pretty much every day, actually, how I haven't moved back over to lending or how come I haven't got my real estate license. And I, people don't know kind of what's yeah. possible in title. And exactly. It's, it's, it's kind of the sneaky beast of the real it estate. It is a sneaky, sneaky beast. Of the real estate world. It is a sneaky um, beast. I found out some uh, earnings of some other people we know yep. last for last year. And I was like, what? I had no idea. Yep. Um, but you can make some serious dough. And it's just a lot of fun, to be honest. Like, yeah. literally, my day-to-day -day job is helping agents build their business, and yeah. helping lenders, you know, meet new agents and yeah. build relationships. So yeah. it's it's just kind of a blast. It's good. It's good, yeah. and, and you have to be the the relationship guy. Yep, which you are. Yep. So it works. <laughs> um, what other stuff we should we talk about on here? Well, Brain's going to be on my podcast today too. Oh by yeah, way, everybody. Real talk with Brian <laughs> Madrid. So uh, yeah, follow, follow up this one. I'm gonna yeah. we're gonna shoot right over here, and we have our own staff. Minutes. But, but you know, I want my nephew to come work with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, who does our engineer? But um, oh man, I think that like the business. Uh, one of the things that we were talking about yesterday is the business. Obviously, the refi business is going away somewhat. Yep. Not somewhat. It, somewhat. Yeah. Um, but we're still seeing a lot of you know cash out refis coming in right now. People have so much value in their homes. So yeah, where there's crazy. The yeah. So. You know, people having the opportunity to take money out and do something different with it. And then, you know, rates aren't really, I mean, they're going up, but it's still, it's like, God, some, we've, we saw somebody from, I think, I'm going to botch this right now, so I'm not going to say it. But <laughs> we saw um, another company was talking about, you know, with rate goes up a quarter point, it's 42 bucks on like a $350,000 house. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it's like people are freaking out, being like, oh my goodness. You know what are we gonna do because rates are going up well now they're going up to a three and a half you know three yep. and a quarter yep instead of 2.99 i was looking at my properties yesterday and i've got 2.9 3.125 and a 2.9 i mean that's like free money basically right. yeah, exactly but i was also looking at my neighborhood there's only one house for sale in the neighborhood isn't that shocking I was uh, talking with jeremy brown this morning i know your buddies oh, with yeah. him, and he was talking about fix and flips and yeah. uh said you know a year ago they were looking at properties that were anywhere between 250 and 300 price per square foot yeah. and now average price per square foot in scottsdale is like 425. yeah so finding a fix and flip is almost like speculative now because there's just yeah there is how could you possibly find one yeah i mean you're basically just going all right it's going to appreciate another 20 percent next month anyway so screw it let's just take the risk you know so it's kind of what and he, he talked about it. he picked up a property in mcdowell mountain for a million dollars and <laughs> He's gonna sell for one point seven. Yeah, well, like, <laughs> yeah, it was like one eight was gonna be the number, and he's gonna go Jeez. for like six hundred and fifty a square or something crazy. And it's like, yeah, that's actually what's going on out there. Though. Well, we had a guy call about a cash out refi friend of mine from EC, yep. and he was, he has a rafter house that he bought like five years ago, and he thinks he can get rid sell it for two point four, but he's probably just gonna hang on to it, and he's looking to build another house for three point five at eight hundred dollars a square foot. In Arcadia, what? <laughs> I mean, like, dude, what is going on? I mean, it, even in Nor Norterra, right? Like I seventeen in Happy Valley or Joe Max area. I mean, prices are not they're up three fifty yeah. square foot. I mean, you're looking at a you're looking at a two thousand square foot house now. It can go for six hundred grand. Ocotillo, I was talking to a, an agent the other day that lives in Ocotillo, and she said nineteen hundred square foot house would go around eight eight hundred thousand dollars in Chandler. Yeah, I mean, it's a really nice community, but like, come on. Yep. That's insane. So how is anybody like these guys going to get a house? Like, you know, a first, first time not that you buyer, don't, right? might already own a house, but like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? First time home buyers, somebody in their, you know, 25 yep. or something that's looking to buy a house, they better have a good damn income. Well, and they need to buy now because, I yeah. mean, in a year from now, it's going to be another 20% potentially. And, yeah. you know, you're pricing, I, your point, pricing yourself out that much more. I, I, mean, I hope that that's what happens. I bought a house like, so I, okay, so. This is the last thing we'll talk about before we have to <laughs> <laughs> that's about me. So I bought a house in North Central to remodel, yep. to live in, okay. and we're having a hell of a time getting through permits. So we're like seven months maybe now into it. Yeah. Still not through permits. Now going back and drainage and drainage and I forget what it is. Something, drainage and something. So then I, they redlined it and now I had to go back to the architect, back 
but dude, that house has gone up like eight, like eighty grand since I bought the house. Right. And by the time we actually build this thing in a year, hopefully it's worth Might you just know, sell quite it. a bit. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, all of them. Right. But like every house is gone. I'm gonna freaking move yep. Costa Rica, and just make some do zooms. Funny, I actually had a real estate agent tell me that the other day. He's like, my value of my property is quadrupled. He's like, I'm make a million dollars if I sell my house. He's like, I might just move to Costa Rica for a few years. I'm like, what? That's a dude. That's <laughs> that's that's a place for some reason. Everybody keeps saying that. Stewart always says he's like, dude, we're just gonna just go sell T-shirts in Costa Rica. Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> screw this, we're done. <laughs> the, the, the mortgage business is hard, everybody. So quit yelling at us. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ryan, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, dude, for sure. Thanks for having me. Great spot. Thank, thank Turned you. Turned out well. He did everything like we did, but a little bit better. Hey. <laughs> I mean, the cameras and the tripods and the lights are pretty damn nice, so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, maybe we're going to have to upgrade. <laughs> Whatever. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, stay tuned for another episode of Break It Down with Braden. Yeah. Thanks, See buddy. You guys soon. Thanks, guys.